you know, it's, it, it, I'm, I'm tickled to death that we won. Um, but, but first off, I want, I want to really compliment the way South Carolina uh, played, the way they competed. Uh, they never quit. Um, you know, it's just the ball bounced uh, our way a couple of times. Um, and, you know, it's a shame right now the, with what all these young men are going through that there has to be a winner and loser, I think, by everybody getting to play tonight. Uh, absolutely was a win for some of these guys. Uh, and I'm glad that we got a chance to do that. I'm proud of our players. I'm proud of our staff, everybody in our organization. <clears throat> when you start thinking about what all these young men at every college has done uh, since March, they go home. Um, some of them were called back in, in June. Some of them were called back in July, depending on the university. Uh, maybe some of them were called back in August, uh, but <clears throat> when they came back, they were facing something that um, we knew nothing about. Um, and the courage that it took for these young men to come back, uh, not knowing what tomorrow holds, um, uh, the faith that they've had in all the institutions that they, they represent, uh, you know, when you look at the, the social injustice that has went across our country and, and to see the courage, <clears throat> excuse me, the courage that um, the players on our team, the players on the other teams, um, it's inspiring to me, uh, this generation of, of young men and, and women that um, are really fighting the fight. Uh, and, uh, it's encouraging for the future of our country uh, to me, uh, but I, I just can't say how proud I am uh, of our players, uh, the other players uh, across the country and, and for what they've been going through. You know, I'm, I'm sure everywhere, um, you know, you, you look at these young men right now, they're having to take tests three days a week. Um, and when you witness it, uh, they're, they're taking these tests with very high anxiety. Um, they're not living the normal life that they lived uh, like the rest of us did when they were in college. You know, they, they sit there in their rooms quarantining themselves so they don't put themselves at risk. Uh, the sacrifices that they're taking, um, it's... Uh, it, it, it's really inspired, inspiring to see the, the courage and the willingness and how important uh, this stuff is to, to all these players. And I just want to commend our players and everybody across the country uh, that are doing this. It, it's, it's inspiring to watch. Um, you know, the, the, and the, the, the last thing that I don't think nobody really, um, there's no way to, to measure it, uh, it's the mental health piece. You know, when you sit in your room, um, not doing what you normally would do while you're in college or high school, uh, trying to make sure that you quarantine, there's not a whole lot to do. Um, and the sacrifices that all of these young men and women are making right now to have an opportunity to be able to play um, says a whole lot about them. Uh, but I just wanted to say that. It's been inspiring to watch. Um, you know, tonight's game, we made a lot of mistakes early on. Uh, we, we had a botched uh, snap, uh, had the ball, you know, driven right through us on the opening drive. Uh, there was a lot of good. Um, we just were very inconsistent. And that's the one thing that we've not just challenged our team. Uh, we played about like I thought we would play. Um, you know, being a uh, in this business for a while, you know when a team's ready to play and because of the circumstances that we faced um, during fall camp, I knew we wasn't ready to play a game uh, at, a, at a high level. Um, but we actually played better in spurts than I was afraid that we would. Uh, and then there was times that um, we didn't sustain. So we had, we had a couple of guys out tonight. Uh, hopefully we'll get them, these guys back, but it's encouraging that our guys continue to find a way. I can't say enough about it. So uh, with that, I'll take any questions. We'll start with Austin Price and then go to David Ubbin. Coach, just 
take me through what you know DeAndre Johnson did in fall camp to kind of earn that that starting spot, and then the play that he had tonight. Uh, it was some of his best of his career. Uh, what what did you think about it? You know, DeAndre over the last. Um, really last year, uh, you really see a young man that is maturing, um, not, not only on the field, but off the field. Uh, he, he wanted to come back and move back into the dorm for his last year. Um, you know, he's, this is his third year in the system. Uh, so he knows what to do. He's a smart guy. Uh, he's a competitor. Uh, he's playing with confidence. Um, I don't know what kind of numbers he had tonight, but it seemed like he was in on a lot of plays. But uh, you know, he's got a lot of he's got a lot of really good football ahead of him. To uh, assess what you saw from Jarrett tonight, you know, in, inconsistent. I mean, he made he made some really good de his decision making was good. Uh, I, I think there was a couple of times. You know, maybe he was confused a little bit. His decision making was good. I know he would like to have some throws back. He was a little high on some throws, uh, but you know what? We, I mean, uh, we hardly any wide receivers practice for a long time. I mean, we've got them back for the last five days. Hopefully, we can clean some of this up and uh, get our timing better uh, for next week. We'll go, Mike Wilson, followed by David Pascal. Yeah, Jeremy, you touched on DeAndre there, but were you surprised just by how much production you got from from the outside linebacker position as a whole with with Tyler Barron and Kevon Bennett as well? Well, um, you know, we we've got other guys too. Those three guys played played pretty well, I guess. And um, Roman Harrison's a guy there. J.J. Peterson, uh, Morvin Joseph is some guys there that um, have ability. Uh, I think Coach. Um, Felton has uh, really poured into these guys. Um, you know, they're they're with the, the exception of DeAndre and Kevon, the rest of them hadn't played hardly any uh, major college football. So they're going to continue to improve. Uh, you know, and 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 I believe that they'll work hard to do that. David. Can you talk about your overall defensive performance in that you always want to make a team one dimensional? And I think they only had 40 rushing yards after three quarters, but they were able to continue with Shy to, to get a lot of connections. Can you just talk about what y'all tried to do defensively and what y'all were able to do? Well, we didn't get off the field on third down in that one drive there, the first drive. Um, and you got to give them credit. Um, you know, if y'all noticed tonight, we played Bryce at safety. Uh, you know, Warren Burrell and and um, and uh, Jalen McCullough uh, have been out. Uh, they've only practiced a few days. Uh, Sean Schamberger, we're piecing it together there a little bit. Uh, knew that coming in. So, um, but we we were inconsistent. We we had a chance to to kind of put our foot on our throat, and we didn't. We got to give them credit, and we got to quit making mistakes, and uh, got to do a better job coaching. That's on me. So we'll 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 coach them up better, hopefully between now and next week. Oh, Patrick Brown, followed by Trey Wallace. Yeah, Jeremy, what did you think uh, you guys got from Bayless Jones? He had the, the big kick return and a few catches tonight. What do you think of the what he brought to your offense? Well, Bayless is a guy that um, he's really strong. Uh, he's got a good core, got good quickness, uh, you know, had a lot of success in return game out at USC, something that we felt like he could help us with here. Uh, you know, so a uh, guy that uh, we got to get the ball to more. Uh, and we, we had several young wide receivers that uh, didn't get any touch as much tonight. And, uh, you know, those guys will – as they continue to learn the offense, most of those guys have missed a lot of practice. As they continue to learn the offense, they'll get a chance to get them some touches. Jeremy, what did you think of uh, Jeremy Banks tonight, your inside linebackers? How do you think the outside linebackers played? And what did you think of Toa Toa's pick six? Well, um, you know, it, it, it's hard to, 
look at every position, right? So I'd hate to really comment on how somebody played until I watch the tape. Um, you know, I feel like we've got four guys in there with with uh, Henry and, and Q and Jay uh, that can give us some minutes in there. Uh, we've got to be more consistent there. Made some mistakes there, which we knew we would. So uh, these guys will continue to improve and get better. We'll go to Blake Topmeyer and then Gustavo. And Jeremy, with the uh, snap on the punt, is is that something that had been an issue at all throughout the preseason? Uh, and uh, you know, why'd you just? I mean, obviously there's a bad snap, but just can you kind of take us through your decision to make the change there at long snapper? Well, um, you know, I think I told you guys back in camp that it was either the first four or five days we didn't even do special teams uh, because all the specialists were in quarantine. Um, and then when they all got back, uh, half our team was in quarantine. So we couldn't really cover kicks. And uh, that that's no excuse for not repping. Um, I mean, we were repping the stuff. But I'm just saying, we, we hadn't got the, the work there that we need. Uh, you know, so, hey, Will, Will Albright, uh, we think, is one of the best long snappers in the country, OK? Uh, he, he he made a mistake. Uh, I promise you, when he woke up this morning, he didn't walk out there and say, hey, I'm going to roll the snap back there. I just, you know, I didn't, when I woke up this morning, I didn't want to call a call that Mike Bobo got me on by throwing the ball to the back down there in the red area that resulted into a call. You know, I wished I had that back. So we all make mistakes, and Will's going to be a great player for us. Gustavo? Coach, you started the last two season not winning, and tonight you guys starting down seven nothing, and you guys came back. You know how proud you felt of your players. You know this win. You know with, you said in the beginning. You know how tough this post uh, off uh, You know the off season was. How proud you felt when your players overcome so many difficulties. You know start from behind and coming back. Well, I'm 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 tickled that they found a way. You know, so um, there's lots of things that we can work on and improve. I'm sure. Uh, there's probably lots of things that we did well. Um, but, you know, the, the bottom line is we're leaving Columbia with a W, and that's what we came here for. All right, time for a few more here. We'll go to Rob Lewis and back to David Oven. Coach, you just touched on finding a way. Now that you've won seven in a row, and four of them have been, you know, one possession games. Do you feel like that's one of the, the things that your squad has gotten better at is just knowing what it takes to win, not panicking in, in close games, and, and like you say, finding a way? Well, I think they believe. Uh, they believe in each other. They believe in our program. They believe in our culture. Um, and, I mean, you know, it, 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 it's not easy in this league, right? So uh, we're, we're not going to complain about winning a football game. I can tell you that. We're going to celebrate winning one on the road in this league. It's hard to do. So we're going to celebrate. And we're going to go back and fix what we can fix tomorrow, and take Monday off, and go to work on Missouri on Tuesday. David. Uh, Jeremy, how did you assess what you saw from the offensive line tonight, and, and what did you make of, of Cade Mays, uh, I guess, not getting anything definitive um, heading, into the season. He's heading into the season opener? Yeah, you know, the, uh, the offensive line, uh, there was times that we opened up some really good holes. There's times that we had really good protection, but there was a few times that we didn't, right? So uh, everywhere on our football team uh, can really improve, and uh, we've got to work hard to do, work hard to do that. You know, the, the, the situation with Cade uh, is, is uh, it, it's obviously been frustrating with me, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm Frustrated for Cade. Uh, I'm frustrated for, you know, a lot of kids that maybe are having to sit out this year. I mean, the things that these young men uh, go through right now. And I mean, Cade was one of the guys that, when we had all the unknowns, uh, came back and tried to persevere and find a way, you know. Uh, it's just frustrating. Uh, you know, my grandmother used to always say, if you ain't got something nice to say, don't say nothing at all. So I'm just not going to say anything else. 
We'll finish with Joe Rex Road. Sorry, I got a mute problem there. So, if you let me real fast, I just want to ask you about Elijah Simmons, uh, what you've seen from him in camp. What do you think you can get out of him this year? And if you did notice from the sideline some of the stuff he was doing out there tonight. Well, you know, most of the time when I notice Elijah is when he's coming through the lunch line. Uh, me and him usually have the two biggest plates. So, uh, but he's a guy that's worked really hard that uh, when he got here this summer, he weighed 370 pounds, you know, and I think he played tonight at 343. So that tells you a little bit about him. And uh, I think he's got a lot of upside, uh, smart kid, uh, really good student, football is important to him, uh, has a smile on his, on his face all the time. And he might be the best singer in the whole state of Tennessee. Thank you, Coach. We'll have players shortly on this same Zoom link.